Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, presentation. Uh, today we're at a round table uh, going to talk about how media and technology affects the children. And this is a school project uh, called Staying Safe Online and it is organized and implemented by the students of the 8th grade um, from the school um, somewhat. Yeah? Uh, honorable guests, uh, respected the principal, the teachers and all the students that are here. Um, and also I, I would like um, to thank uh, my teacher for giving me this big opportunity on my speech for the internet. Uh, internet stands for uh, International Network. It connects people all over the world. The world uh, cannot be imagined without the internet. It has made our lives easier and quicker and is possible to do various tasks while sitting at home. Internet provides a platform where people can learn, pay bills, buy movie tickets and uh, where people can do many more things. One can easily take lessons on the subject, uh, whichever they are interested in, in uh, irrespective of age and is provided uh, free costs. Uh, anyone can get uh, information regarding uh, anything on Google now. It is possible to do shopping uh, while sitting at home and there are a variety of products available online. Uh, social networking has uh, helped to connect people in different parts of the world. Now it is possible to do video conferences and has made communication easier. Internet has made this big world a small unit uh, where we can get information about anything anywhere. Uh, Internet is the invention of uh, modern and high technology science. It is a big hand of today's success of the people. It provides us amazing facility of searching uh, any information from any corner of the world by anyone. In today's world, the Internet is the simplest and cheapest way to connect with people across the world. Internet is the superhighway of information. Uh, now uh, I would like uh, uh, somebody to talk about uh, computer uh, then and now. I need to move forward. Hello everyone, I am very glad to see all of you here. I am going to talk about the, the history of computer for computer then and now. The main the main points of this of the, uh, of this is the, the main points of the computer then and the computer now. Computer then. In, in this part, uh, we will talk about the first invented computer, the first mechanical computer, the first programmable computer, the first personal computer or PC, and the first laptop. The first invented computer. There is no easy answer to the, uh, due, uh, due to the many different classifications of computers. The first mechanical computer created by Charles Babbage in 1822 doesn't really resemble what most would consider a computer today. Therefore, this document has been created with a listing of each of the computers first, starting with the difference engine and leading up to the computers we use today. The first invented computer in this picture is the first calculator. The first mechanical computer in, in 1837, Charles Babbage proposed the first general mechanical computer named the analytical engine. The analytical engine contained an ALU, basic flow control, punch cards, and integrated memory. The, it is the first general proposed computer concept. And in this, uh, in this photo is the analytical engine created by Charles Babbage. The first programmable computer, the Z1, was created by German Konrad Zuse in his parents' living room between 1936 and 1938. It is considered to be the first electromechanical binary programmable computer and the first really functional modern computer. In this photo is the Z1 created by the German Zusa. The first personal computer or the first PC. In 1975, Ed Roberts coined the term personal computer as we know the PC when he introduced the Altair 8800. Although the first personal computer is considered by to be the Kenbak one, which was first introduced for seventy seven hundred fifty dollars in nineteen seventy one. In this photo is the Altair eight thousand eight hundred. The first laptop, the IBM five thousand one hundred, is the first portable computer or the first laptop, which was released in September nineteen seventy five. The computer weighed fifty. 55 pounds and had a 5 inch CRT display, tape drive, and, and uh, most uh, than this. And this photo is the IBM 5100. Uh, 5, Com uh, computer now. In this part, we will talk about the computer addiction 
computers in the education, and computers in the business, and the computers in the banks. Computer now. C uh, computer addiction. Today everything is controlled and managed by computers as we know. Businesses com and companies use a computer to do marketing and to business planning. They use a computer to record customer data and they use a computer to manage goods and services. Computer with an internet connection is really important for business and uh, everything in our life. Computers in the education. As you know, education is most important in our life. Computer reinvented the education systems, the, and now schools, colleges, and almost all kinds of educational institutions are, are now providing online degree programs for college students and university students. Computers are most important educational tools for teachers and learners. And this is the photo in the computers in education. As we know, it's very important now, to, in these days, the computer is very important in our education. Computers in the business. Computer with an internet connection is really important for business. Now, they can do internet marketing, they can sell products and services online. They can manage, hire employees around the world by use, by the use just of one computer and the internet. Almost all kinds of businesses is using computer in their daily official works. Uh, uh, such Microsoft Office to create professional looking document, Excel spreadsheet to manage goods and services. Computers in the business. In this photo it is telling us that the computer is even very important in the businesses too. Computers in the banks. Even in the banks are using computers daily to foster and accurate the customer demands. Banks are using a computer to deposit customer money in their account. In this case, cashier enters the account number of a customer in their banking application. They first confirm the account number and customer details, and then enter the deposited amount in their banking application of the use of the keyboard, as you see here. Computer in this photo is telling us that the, uh, the importance of the computers in the banks. Thank you very much, Kanit, for uh, taking us a little bit uh, back in time and uh, showing us how the computers were and how technology was, and it, uh, it uh, probably uh, reflected on how uh, much uh, technology has advanced uh, to this day. And now I would like uh, Petri Tereja to talk about the internet. Thank you for the opportunity. In, uh, in this uh, project of mine, I, well, first of all, I would like to, to, to thank you, my teacher, uh, the English teacher, for giving me this honorable, this, uh, this uh, opportunity to uh, tell my project, the school project, Stay in Safe Online. But in this project, I have taken a topic which uh, everyone here uh, definitely uses in home or in work or in different places. This is the internet. The internet can use, is used by many people. In this picture, we can see a family using the internet. We, uh, we can see that uh, all of them are using a kind of different type of internet that are not talking about each other. If we go to the next picture, we can see some people working together and talking about probably some uh, future uh, working uh, projects. But they are not using the computer or internet because they don't need it for the moment. But they will need it when they try to uh, implement what they are, their idea. If we go to the next uh, segment, internet. The internet is the global system of interconnected computer networks that use the internet protocol suit to link devices worldwide. It is a network of networks that consists of private, public, academic, business and government networks of local to global scope linked by a broad array of electronic, wireless, and optical networking technologies. If we go to the next part, we can see the internet history. The internet history is pretty, is, uh, is a long, is really long, but I uh, have uh, made a segment, that, uh, a short uh, part of it. Uh, the research into packet switching. One of the fundamental internet technologies started in the early 1960s in the work of Paul Baron and Donald Davis. Packet switch networks such as an NPL network, ARPANET, the Merit Network, Cyclades, and tele uh, Telenet 
were development, developed in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The ARPANET project led to the development of four protocols for interworking by which multiple separate networks could be joined into a network of networks. ARPANET development began with two network nodes, which were interconnected between the network measurements center at the University of California, Los Angeles, by Samuel School, Engineering and Applied, and Applied Science, directed by Leonard Kleinrock, NLS, NLS, System at CRI International by Douglas uh, Angelbart in Menlo Park, California on 29 October 1969. Like, with that, we can see the internet history is pretty long. But in this next segment, we can see the good sides and the bad sides of the internet. We have a couple of good sides, but we have a couple of bad sides too. The good side of the internet, or with the let's say with internet, you can search things that you need. You can communicate with people to you want to, etc. But the bad sides are more important because the bad side is that while you're using the internet, you can get robbed in many ways. You can get robbed from your bank account, by your credit card. You can get robbed about your um, your social things. It's, etc. You can have misunderstanding with people and can end bad. Like you can have misunderstanding, end up in a fight, or even bad end up in an accident, or even die, etc. If you go to the next picture, we can see world population of user in regions. In this picture, we can see the colors from black to dark blue, and we can see that the black is 0.29%. We can see that at the part of the Europe and Africa, the, this is pretty uh, a lot of common. But we can see also that in the dark blue, we can see the part of America and part of Sweden, Finland, and Norway that uh, is 19 to 100 percent of population users in there. If we go to the next picture, we can see a table which is set, which is made by three lanes. On uh, one lane tells the date. Uh, 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 one lane tells the number of users. One lane tells the world population. Uh, like for uh, see uh, August 2001, which has uh, 513 million uh, number of users, uh, or should I say more, more or less 8.6 percent of the world population. We can also see December 2015 that the number has gone pretty much a lot higher, the 3.366 million, or more like 46.4 percent. If we go to the next picture, we can see that I made this table to the year we are now, 2000, 2019, which is 4.583 million, or 57.8%. But the number can go high because it's only the start of the year. This was my project. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Budget, for uh, telling us about the internet, about some uh, bigger details that we didn't know, even though we use the internet every day. And now I, I would like Gentiana Rajiv to talk for us about kids and the internet. Uh, at first, uh, thank you for being here and listening to my presentation. Today I'm going to present a project called Kids and the Internet. If you think that your personal informations are safe in the internet, then you're so wrong. The internet isn't the right place to hide your personal information, because the internet is more dangerous than we think. It's important to know, nothing ever goes away once it's posted online. Uh, here we have the five smart rules to stay safe online. Safe, keep safe by being careful not to give out personal information such as your full name, email address, phone number, home address, photos, or school name, to people you are chatting with online. Meet. Meeting someone you have only been in touch with online can be dangerous. Only do so with your forms or cares, permission, and even then only when they can be present. Accepting. Accepting emails, IMSs, or opening files, pictures, or texts from people you don't know or trust can lead to problems. They may contain viruses or nasty messages. Really able. Information you find on the internet may not be true, or someone online may be lying about who they are. Make sure you check information before you believe it. Tell. Tell your parents, carers, or a trusted adult if someone or something makes you feel uncomfortable or worried, or if you or someone uh, you know is being bullied online. 
the meaning of this picture is that we are generally giving too much personal information to the internet and this risks our privacy a lot. The internet is going to be one of the biggest problems in the world, not just for teens and adults, but also for the kids. We are seeing it, but we are doing nothing to stop it. Uh, here we see a picture of a kid uh, that actually doesn't care about the real life. He's lost his, his virtual world. Kids nowadays even doesn't care about playing ball or uh, something else. Uh, but for this, not only the kids, but also the parents are guilty. Because we see so many parents that doesn't spend enough time with their kids, but just through a tablet or a smartphone to them. And that's all. They even don't think uh, that an act like this could change their kids' life. The parents have to protect their kids, especially from internet and social media. Are you bad parent if you say no to social media for your kids? The answer is no. If you say no to social media for a kid, this could be the most right decision for your kid's safety. Uh, but we can't say that all of the parents nowadays are good examples for their kids. Because there are so many parents that spend all the time with their smartphones doing phone calls, or they just sit in front of the TV, and of course, the kids take the example from their parents first. The use of technology and internet at a young age can also cause psychological problems and dependence, games like Counter-Strike. There are so many kids who constantly cry and require the tablet or smartphone just to get access to internet. Uh, here we have some of the most open social media problems like depression, risk, traumatic and fear. Nowadays, it has been very difficult to find a kid that doesn't know how to use the internet. The use of the internet is changing the way the kids think. This is the opinion of many people nowadays. The existing of social media is changing the lives of many kids in family and in school. They are becoming more stressed, sometimes more aggressive, and it seems like they are forgetting what happiness means. Here we have some of the most popular programs of social media, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, nowadays, kids with only three and four years start using tablets and smartphones and download different apps. With five and six years, they start playing video games online, which is very dangerous for the privacy of every kid. Uh, the fact is, now the kids spend more time with social media uh, than with their uh, parents or teachers. Uh, the internet used by young kids makes them uh, feel more self-confident and also makes them feel more insecure in the real world. We can see that uh, not just between kids, but also between a part of people in the whole world, day to day is being created a distance just because of the internet. Uh, here we see a picture of some kids, and these uh, kids are the bare reality of today. The, the kids who once played all day with friends, now they're focused only on internet and social media. Uh, because of the internet and social media, a lot of kids are being kidnapped and trafficked because they start talking and chatting with strangers, and uh, of course for them it's very easy to manipulate little kids. Uh, the meaning of this picture is that internet and social media is uh, all over the world and now it's too late to stop it. Uh, here we have some statistics about kids and adults. 55% uh, uh, teens have given out personal information to someone they don't know, including photos and psychical descriptions. 29% uh, have been stalked, 22% have been cyber pranked, 29% teens have posted mean information, embracing photos or screen remorse about someone, 24% have had private or embracing info made public without their consent. Uh, here we have a very important advice uh, for not only for kids but also for teens and adults. Uh, before we do something online, we have to think: if uh, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Uh, thank you. Us the downside of uh, the internet and uh, all the dangers that uh, it uh, it can uh, do and uh, uh, how uh, teens and the young the young kids are affected by it. And now I'd like uh, any of us here to talk about the protection of children from the internet. <laughs>
you for coming uh, to the to my project. I go now. I'm gonna show you protection of children from uh, from the internet. We have six ways to explain children how to protect from the internet. The first is sharing online information, social media posting, deception, identity thief, or the website and cyber security. It isn't good to share our information in online websites or in online games because uh, hackers with those information can hack our email or can uh, threat children in lots of ways and it is bad to give our uh, address, credit card, uh, but we, we can give our nickname or uh, websites or online games. The second is social media posting. Children who open social media like Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, WhatsApp, they aren't allowed to open them before they get uh, 12. Uh, it isn't as a big problem as they open them, but it's a big problem if they post lots of photos because uh, hackers with the, uh, can take the photos and open a fake uh, address or an email and treat it our friends. Uh, the, the third is deception. Deception is bad habit that happen all over the world. The world uh, we have lots of explains. Uh, the last is one online game that was the blue wheel or the uh, or in Albanian Banana View. Lots of kids died from playing this game, and the, uh, and that means that parents should uh, shouldn't uh, not let their children playing all uh, kinds of games. And the, four, uh, the, uh, the fourth is uh, identity thief. Identity thief is uh, one of the most dangerous ways uh, for children's abuse in our uh, thought internet. is a bad thing because at the first is an illegal thing. Second, because uh, the, against uh, the law uh, conflict, we uh, with the law. The person who illegally uses the, uh, our identity, you can harm uh, you in uh, many ways. Uh, the five uh, is order websites with uh, a visit. Uh, children uh, should not order things in in secure website uh, because they can only steal the money and never uh, bring the uh, things that you order. You can look when website is secure and when it's an insecure. You can learn it when uh, in the stars say HTTPS. That means it, uh, it's secure. And the website that doesn't have uh, the S, they are not secure. Uh, the uh, sixth is the cyber security. Cyber security consists of the technologies, process, and controls designed to protect systems, networks, and data from uh, cyber attacks. Effective uh, cyber security re uh, reduces the risk of cyber attacks and protects against the uh, explain uh, of system networks and technologies. Thank you very much, Elian, for showing us those uh, games and those uh, websites that are very dangerous for a lot of kids uh, today, that, uh, and they can uh, very well, uh, well uh, fall uh, prey to those uh, websites and games, and uh, that uh, might help on uh, reducing uh, the, uh, the playing of, or the looking on those websites. And now I would like uh, Bart Nairia to talk about uh, internet safety. Thank you, the teacher, for giving me the big opportunity to present my presentation. I'm going to talk about the internet safety. Uh, I have four main points. Online safety, information security, personal safety, and cyber attacking. Online safety. Online safety is trying to be safe on internet and maximizing the user's power. Uh, users' personal safety and security risk to private information uh, associated with using the internet. As the number of internet users grows worldwide, internet uh, and organizations ex have expressed a, a concert about the safety of children using the internet. Safe the Internet Day is celebrated worldwide in February to raise the awareness about internet safety. Uh, information security, sensitive uh, information such uh, as uh, personal information 
or identity or associated with personal property. Uh, we have two type of uh, scams, phishing and internet scams. Uh, the difference between two of them or that phishing uh, creates false website to uh, attract people to uh, open them. Uh, internet scams uh, or plans that uh, don't use false website, they use direct uh, websites to uh, get the information. Uh, personal safety, the growth of internet gave rise to many important services uh, to anyone with a connection. While this service allowed con communication with other uh, you, uh, users, uh, these uh, users want to steal the uh, personal safe list. So in the right we have two posters uh, that show uh, us how to be safe. Cyber attacking. Cyber attacking is cyber talking is use of internet or other other electronic to stalk or harass an individual or group or organization. It might include making false uh, statements of fact, monitoring, making threats, identity thief, or damage to data. Uh, Cyberbullying is attack upon an individual or a group through the use of electronics, such instant messaging, uh, social media, and email. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for uh, telling us about um, about those uh, uh, about the biggest problem that is uh, right now happening on the internet, which is cyber attacking, cyber bullying, or uh, cyber stalking, and uh, giving us a little bit of information about those things. And now uh, I would like uh, Lori Salmon to talk for us about uh, educate yourself. So, uh, first of all, thank you for all of you being here. I want to thank my teacher for giving me this opportunity uh, to, uh, to talk for this project for children education. Uh, so, I would start uh, by the first. So, uh, right over here we have a website which tells us that how to protect our children online, uh, which is uh, Protect Your Child, and we can register here and we can watch that uh, what is our kid doing online uh, in his phone or, or, or in his laptop. Uh, so right here we have another website, is your child's online reputation or privacy or risk, uh, that uh, find out uh, with a free symbol wrapper. Uh, so uh, right here we, uh, we need to put our Gmail on here and then we need to register and we can watch if our kid, what is he doing online, if he's doing any, uh, anything wrong. Uh, so, uh, right here we have uh, cyber security isn't just a personal security, but teaching a child safety and security on the internet can also lead to an opportunity to teach them res a responsibility for objects. Uh, so, uh, this tells us that teaching kids in the basic of internet security uh, from the perspective of just personal security, but for the security of a computer is another facet of preparing them to use a computer by themselves. Uh, teaching your kids by learning yourself. The website can also be used uh, by parents, uh, uh, carriers and children at home. Uh, why not at work? Uh, throw the model uh, yourself and then use uh, your, uh, your knowledge to help your kid. Discussion and interaction of uh, kids. Discussion and interaction between a child and their parents uh, uh, can also play a significant role in children's de uh, development and education success. Uh, this important objective of the Children University of Manchester is giving the children on a site into university life by introducing them to students, staff and, gra uh, and graduations who will expect the university life entails, show children that is a welcoming, accessible and exciting environment and importantly give children as for their own future. Right over here we have some family websites that are really safe that uh, kids can watch like Disney Channel, Cartoon Network and other stuff like this. Uh, then we have your rule maker for your kids. So this is a website th uh, that can be a rule maker for our kids. And, uh, and here we can make a rule that what, uh, and, uh, how many hours can our kids stay online in the internet and what can he do and what can he watch on the internet. Uh, so right here we have a coding website for kids that is really fun for them to do and they can do all my stuff and they can code robots and it's really good for them and it's a really good way to educate our kids. Uh, so, uh, supervising your child, supervision. Most experts recommend that supervising your child at all times they are using the internet under the age of 12. This way you can make sure that the lessons you are teaching them are taking a root. 
you can be around uh, to teach and enforce them lessons rather than uh, th rather than having them fall into bad habits your child might not like but let them know that it's uh, that uh, this is really important for them and they need to know this uh, so the rules, there are some hard and fast rules you should be enforcing with your child. These rules translate across the, uh, the uh, spectrums and criticism in life. And you should be taught your child easily as possible. Uh, so this is, uh, these are some rules that tell us that we need, to, uh, we need to tell our child as early as possible. Because when he grow up, he might not take it uh, seriously and he can get some really bad habits. Thank you very much, Norik, for telling uh, another way to the parents to educate their kids about the internet. And now I would like Andreas Amalisi to talk about the web safe. Hi everyone, and today I'm going to talk about web safety. But first of all, I would like everyone that are in here, but most uh, my teacher, that giving me this big opportunity to be in this round table with the best English teacher, with the best English speakers on the school. So here we have in conjug uh, conjugation. Uh, that says thing before you click, and then um, this is um, conjugation. That uh, this is the word think. Uh, T is for chew, H is for helpful, I is, is for inspiring, N is for necessary, and K is for kind. When you're online, you have to keep your personal information top secret. Uh, you should never give all personal information, such as your name or your friend's name, your home address or your school address, your email address, username, or also password. If you find anything online that's uh, worrying or upsetting you, you should probably tell a parent, a teacher, or a trusted adult immediately. Photographs and webcams uh, reveal personal information and make you vulner vulnerable. Uh, do you really want a stranger to have a picture of you, your friends, or your family? This is, um, this is a question where all of us know the answer. You should never meet an online friend alone. If you must meet an online friend, make sure you're with a trusted adult and also in a public place and that because it may be dangerous for you. If you're being bullied online, then do not respond. Tell a parent, a teacher, or a trusted adult because it, be, it can be dangerous. Uh, do you really want to know who you're chatting to online? People may not be who they say they are. Uh, the, in, like in this picture right here, the, uh, we have a girl saying, hi, I'm Lisa, and the boy that says, I'm Jane, but he may be not be Jane and, or another person. So you should never open or respond to unwanted emails or messages. They may contain viruses, nasty messages, or somebody may be tricking you. Uh, thank you very much, Alvesa, for uh, telling us about those uh, websites, and I hope it, uh, it encouraged um, people to not uh, click on those uh, websites. Uh, now I would like Teuta uh, Rajepe to come and talk about parents' concerns and sharing images. Thank you for letting me be your teacher and uh, thank you for all you all are listening here. Uh, today I'm gonna to, I'm gonna talk for the parents' concern sharing images online. Okay, we, here we have a logo that say beware what you share. Uh, here we have a statistic that, that uh, saying uh, display it, be aware of the rest. Uh, parents who identified the following uh, concerns association with sharing images online, uh, just like uh, kidnapping 43.0%, uh, stalking 32.0%, uh, uh, cyberbullying. 23.0% uh, and pedophilia, 16.5%. Uh, uh, and here we have a physical form that says pedophilia is saving children as targets have used email and chat rooms to gain a child's confidence and then arranged a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, once the child's uh, confidence uh, has been won and meeting arranged, the child is a great uh, danger of physical harm and impairment. Uh, okay, in this photo we are seeing a boy that, that's using his laptop here. 
uh, we here we have two, two graphics is that one of them was a base from 9 to 16 years old for the children in Europe. We identified it one or, or more risks online, uh, just like other risks, 10%, uh, contact related risk, uh, 13%. Um, and in the uh, other graphic, we have a base from uh, 9 uh, and, uh, to 16 years old in children in Europe who made it a platform has one described it online risk. Uh, just, just like games, 10%, a website, 29%, other platforms, 4%, email, 4%. Uh, and in this picture, we have a, li a little boy is uh, l looking uh, sexual, uh, sexual images online. Uh, kids online, uh, it, it, it is edited by Sonia Livestorm and Leslie Hannon. Uh, and here we have a graphic the per uh, who tell the percents. Uh, from two, 2010 to, th to, to 2014, then uh, say a scene height in the message, uh, when was a 13% and now it's 20, received sexual <laughs> message, when was 14 and now it's 5, uh, since sexual image online was 9 and now, and now it's 12, uh, being cyber bullying, now, now it's uh, was 9 and now it's 12, uh, since for an exercise, was eight and now was so fourteen. Meet online con uh, contact offline was eight and I twelve. Both are or upset online was thirteen and I seventeen. Uh, and here we have a gra uh, another graphic that tells the percent of the the um, frequency of young people who talk to strangers online and frequency of who. Who they have no meat in the real world have asked it to meet them. And in this picture is uh, we have a little a little girl who is uh, playing in games online. Uh, thank you very much, Leuta, for telling us about um, or uh, giving advice to the parents uh, for uh, so they shouldn't let uh, their younger kids uh, under age uh, 18 to uh, share images uh, uh, on the internet. And now I would like uh, Soya Demet to talk about uh, will technology uh, ruin our development. Hello teacher, hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about will technology ruin our development. To aim through technology. Technology has completely changed over the past few decades from the way we work to the way we socialize and everything in between. One of the differences that have been most noticeable in the way the children live today is that they uh, is that uh, they play and interact with each other from, from previous generations. Also, technology does provide many positive benefits for learning, but it also can have several negative uh, effects on child development and quality of life. One of the biggest differences in the way the children live today is that they don't get as much exercise as they used to. This is because technology such as computers, smartphones and television encourage them to be, sed uh, to be sedentary when they get home from school as opposed to going outside and playing with other kids. In addition to not getting enough exercise, many kids do not experience the benefits of spending time outdoors when they are heavily reliant on technology for entertainment purposes. Spending time outdoors has a huge number of positive effects on the body because it provides you with exposure to sunlight, which supplies your body with vitamin D, and this helps to fight infections and keep your skin healthy. Here we can see a photo of children having fun outdoors, and this means that uh, it's better spending the time that we spend online in the phones outside. Child obesity rates have risen drastically over the past several decades. In 2012, the child obesity rate was measured to be 18%, which is an 11 point different from the obesity rate in 1980. 
While many schools and parents have made strides to change this by promoting organized exercise both during and after school, we still have a long way to go in helping first ourselves and then why not each other's playing in more conventional ways. This is obesity rates by US states. Uh, here we have three colors, the gray one, green and light green. The gray one said that obesity rate is 30% 30, uh, 30 and over. The green one said that obesity rate is 25% to 29.9%. And the light green one said that obesity rate is under 25%. <coughs> Technology also has profound impacts on the way that children think and feel. Science technology is full of stimuli and often requires paying attention to many different things at once. Children who play many video, uh, video games or spending the most of their time online tend to have a less of an ability to focus than, than kids who use technology minimally. Here we can see a child playing in his phone at night and we know that this is not good for, or for us. So limiting the display time before bedtime is useful for sleep. Because this was all of the negative effects of technology, but this isn't to say that all technology is bad or we should never use it, because technology provides tons of positive opportunities for learning, entertaining and socialing, but it should be monitored and used appropriately. So the message of all of this that I said is that when we want to use technology, we should use it purposefully. Uh, thank you very much, Sumeya, for giving us your opinion on uh, technology or, and uh, if it will ruin our development. And uh, now I would like uh, Albion and Mate to talk about uh, safety awareness for parents. Thank you for having me here. I'm going to talk about safety awareness for parents. Uh, safety awareness for parents is very, is very important. As you can see, uh, parents need to be aware for their, sa for their safety of kids. Uh, you can't keep your kids off the internet, as we know. Internet is everywhere. Computers, phones, uh, internet cafes. And as we know, we are still in the, the, the early stages of the internet. So it's going to have a lot of problems. And the most vulnerable, uh, vulnerable to these problems are our kids. This is a safety net for kids. This is where your kids can uh, browse uh, safety for, in, safe, for safe, in, in safe. So their kids will not uh, appear on those problems that are viruses or, or things they should, shouldn't see. <laughs> you raise your kids all the time. But the, one, one day you need to set them off and make, ma make them ready for their time. Like you're gonna send them to, to the store and they're gonna see something or meet someone they shouldn't. So what you need to make to get to them to know that you're they're ready for. You need to know that they're that, that they are ready. So internet is a great place to um, prepare them for those those places. This is a photo of something that. Uh, that happens. That could happen. Like your kid talking to a stranger, and the stranger kidnapping this kid. This is a book, a six tips that can save your kid's life. It's a very good book. Uh, this is a uh, news that told about a, a child kidnapped on the way to school. You do have parents that want their kids on Facebook, so that can communicate with their grandma or the or a sibling. They are actively encourage the kids to lie because their uh, age of calling them to access it to Facebook is uh, 16 and up. So you are encouraging your kids to lie, that's uh, bad things because one day they are going to lie to you for, uh, for bigger stuff. This is an example of that, a kid uh, communicating on Facebook without being the age they should be. Here's there when they are alone, there is going to be a lot of bad stuff happening uh, when they're not even supervising from uh, parents, they can happen uh, on a stranger who wants to lie to them. As your teen gets older, it's harder to communicate with them and 
communicate with them and uh, educate them. So you need to know to educate them for uh, from a younger age, and you need to know that they're ready because that time is almost too late because they're not gonna listen to you. Yeah, this is a teen talking to a stranger who can take uh, photos from her or something else and can go to a lot of bad stuff. This is a mother t controlling her computer and she seems very worried what's gonna find what she's gonna find there. Don't give up. Even if uh, your kid seems to go on the wrong path, get the get the kids involved. Let them know that your that the pictures of them you're sharing and take down any that considers personal or embarrassing. You need to be there for your kids, whatever whatever happens. So you need to they need to know that you're there for, for them. Here's a kid being supervised from her parents. The supervising is very very important for kids because a lot of bad stars are in the in the internet. And here's the same photo. Help them when you learn to double. Don't don't give them the solving of the problem, but just help them because you need to know that they are ready to solve problems. Here's the slogan: What's the problem? When you ask your kids what's the problem, they are all gonna say nothing. But you need to be free to them, and they to be free to you to talk to talk to them. Here's uh, uh, something that happens that probably is too late to uh, to solve. Uh, like a photo or someone died. So this is things that can happen to that if you're not aware of what your kids are doing. Here's the parent supervising his child. It's easy for parents to get come to the tracking every text. And the kids hate where you track every text of them, but it's, it's good for, for them because it's safer that way. Here's a family enjoying time on the internet. Uh, cooperate with your kids. Cooperating with your kids is very important because uh, because cooperating with your kids, so they're gonna uh, they're gonna help you. Gonna help them to solve more problems. So they're, when their problems go in their life, you're easier to solve. Thank you very much, Albion, for uh, giving another uh, advice, or uh, so parents could. Uh, be more aware of what their uh, child, uh, child is doing and uh, never give up on uh, talking to their uh, kid. Uh, now I would like Erinor Hajani to talk about online bullying uh, speak up. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you our teacher for giving me the opportunity to be part of this great uh, project uh, for us. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, online bullying or cyberbullying, uh, which is um, a very important uh, problem among us. Um, the question we all want to know is uh, what is cyberbullying? Uh, cyberbullying is the use of electronic message to bully someone, uh, typically of intimidating and threatening nature. Uh, Cyberbullying, uh, as I said, uh, continues to be one of the biggest challenges facing young people online. Uh, it's uh, redefining the climate of bullying, but it is having clear impact upon the identity, behaviors and personality of its young uh, user. Um, based on a research done in the UK, um, they found that uh, cyberbullying exists in most of social networks. Um, 42% of Facebook uh, users aged between 12 and 20 um, said that they experienced some kind of cyberbullying. Um, bullying is, um, has many forms like uh, leaving someone out, making fun of someone, um, putting someone down, uh, etc. Uh, while nationwide anti-bullying campaigns have raised awareness about bullying in school, the lifetime uh, cyberbullying uh, victimization among uh, middle and high school students rose to 33.8% in 2016 from 19% in two, um, 2007, according to the Cyberbullying Research Center. Um, Cyberbullying statistics uh, refers to internet uh, bullying. Bullying statistics show that cyberbullying is a serious problem among teens. 
Uh, by being uh, more aware of cyberbullying, Steen and adults can help to fight it. Um, this is, um, in this uh, picture, we have uh, many forms of bullying, um, as we can see. 64% um, of the students who experienced cyberbullying said that it impacted their ability to learn and feel safe at school, uh, while 12% said that uh, they had cyberbullying someone in some point in their life. Um, uh, this is uh, some statistics that show um, the difference uh, between male and females, uh, where we can see that over a lifetime, uh, females are um, often cyberbullied, uh, while boys are most likely to bully others. Um, we should uh, try to break the barriers of bullying. Um, we should try to talk uh, to the people who are uh, bullied or uh, report it to someone uh, when we see someone getting bullied. Um, teenage cyberbullying is also far more likely to occur between former friends and boyfriends or girlfriends than between students who were never friends or in a romantic relationship according to a paper presented at the annual meeting of the American Sociological Association in 2015. Uh, this is an, uh, a picture of uh, someone about to receive a threatening message. As we can see that um, from the message here, we're going to get you after school. Uh, this is one of the most uh, common um, messages of cyberbullying. According to the U.S. Research Center, in 2016, 40% of people have been harassed online, which is uh, too much. Uh, other than cyberbullying, uh, there are many other forms of bullying, like physical, verbal and emotional bullying. common uh, re concern regarding uh, cyberbullying is that strangers, totally strangers, can attack someone uh, but to here we see that uh, not only uh, strangers um, are uh, bully those who don't know each other, um, it's associated with close uh, connection, said a prof professor of sociology at the Pennsylvania uh, State University. Um, the effects of cyberbullying stretch from skipping school to depression and in some extreme cases suicide. Social media can be used for good or evil. If used in productive ways it can affect uh, great change. Uh, when children uh, learn positive online behavior as early as possible um, it will help them a lot uh, with not being awake. Um, so, how many suicides have to take uh, place for the society to understand that um, bullying is not a game and it's not funny and it kills? Um, we as uh, the social community should try to be the supporting uh, network for those who can speak for themselves and be um, the supporting network. Uh, thank you very much, Winner, for talking about one of the biggest problems in the world, which is uh, online bullying and a way to stop it, which is speaking uh, up to it. And now I would like Rene Sasarochi to talk about cyberbullying. So, hello everyone, thanks for coming. I want to thank the uh, English teachers uh, a lot for giving me this opportunity to present my project. I'm going to talk about cyberbullying. What is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is the use of electronic communication to bully a person uh, by sending messages of an intimidating or threatening nature. The most common places where cyberbullying occur are uh, social media such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, twi uh, Twitter, SMSs, also known like uh, text messages through uh, text messages through d devices, instant messages, emails. 
thing before you click, the concept of thing before you click is actually one of the most important factor on terms of information security. We need to think before we click because that can send us to death. Uh, because cyberbullying is a loading cause of youth suicide. Viral tactics examples. Because cyberbullying can happen in, uh, in different ways, examples based on real life experiences can provide us a deeper understanding, a deeper understanding of the tactics uh, typically used. Some states have, have chosen to prosecute young people who bully for criminal har harassment, including encouraging someone to die by suicide. Some forms of cyberbullying are forms of harassment that cross the line into a criminal activity, and some tactics occur in uh, uh, dating relationships and can turn in, in interpersonal violence. Cyberbullying tactics. Is it important to understanding how children are cyberbullied so it can be easily recognized and action can be taken? Some of the most common cyberbullying tactics include posting comments or rumors about someone online that are mean, hurtful, or embarrassing, threatening to hurt someone or telling them to kill themselves, posting a mean or hurtful picture or video, Pretending to be someone else online in order to solicit or post personal or false information about someone else. Posting mean or hateful uh, names or comments or content about any race, religion, ethnicity or other personal characters online. Creating a mean or hurtful web page about someone. Uh, some of cyberbullying tactic is a bullet for being economically challenged. Students posted mean negative comments on another classmate's social media accounts, commenting on his clues and sneakers, which were not, not the more expensive name brands most of them were wearing. They included him calling him poor. The boy missed many days of school trying to avoid the harassment and embarrassment. This is another uh, cyberbullying tactic, jealousy bullying. A teenage girl was harassed by another girl in her class for dating a very popular boy. The girl sent her hateful messages via text and social media and whole directory messages on her school locker. Uh, this is another cyberbullying tactic, encouraging self-harm or suicide. A young boy with a physical disability and scars on his face was harassed on social media and via text by other students. They called him derogatory names, told him he'd be better off that. This is another cyberbullying tactics, uh, bullied for being gay. A teenage boy who was openly gay began receiving death threats via phone, text, and social media for being gay. Uh, this is another cyberbullying tactics, doxing over online gaming. A teenage boy posted comments on a public gaming forum expressing his dislike of certain game features and tactics. Another user disagreed with him in the forum then searched for the boy's information online and posted his address, email address, and social media links in another comment. The boy then received multiple emails and messages from strangers threatening to come to his home and assault him and to block him from games. Uh, thank you very much, Elenesa, for uh, talking also about one of the most frequent uh, ways of bullying, which is uh, cyberbullying and informing us about it. And now I'd like uh, Delvina Asal to talk about the mysterious websites and games on the internet. Uh, hi everyone, and uh, I, I would like to thank you for hearing me out on this project. Uh, hold on. And, uh, today I will be uh, presenting mysterious websites and games on the internet. And uh, the internet is home to all kinds of secrets. The countless posting, the ends of the government cover-ups, conspiracies, and other forms, and all of the forms of secret contact. Many of those websites are made unsolved until this day. Uh, Emery.angelfire.com is the first website that we're going to talk about. And if you head to this website, you will be seeing a home page full with text that are written in Thai. The text is very poorly written, but if you translate it a bit, it means Eric are complex diseases that can be devastating to individuals as well as family members. There's also a photo on There's also a photo on the homepage, and if you click it, the text becomes more and more unreadable. It appears to intentionally display the same text as listed previously. 
uh, with each click is obviously making the translating more and more difficult to read. It's reported that if, if you click on the photo dozens of times, it will eventually ring directly to a page with very distorted text. The photo on the homepage is a doctor named Bali Polonowicz from Thailand. It's very unclear to what your relation is with this website. If you look up on Google for Enric or Gamex diseases, it's almost destined that neither of the diseases or conditions exist. There's also a string of numbers at the bottom of the page, uh, but, to my, uh, but to my knowledge it hasn't been deciphered yet. But the text reads 812-432-899-281-289-213-2000AF. There's also a second page with a text in the sidebar. At one point the text reads internal server error 413 uh, pressed after open help file. Below are also a lot of series of numbers and letters reading 0033192-00FF00. Clicking on the bypass login link in the bottom of the page takes you to this page with more text. Text is also read in ASA2 and when it's translated it says evidence agenda. There are a lot of creepy things in this website, but I will just stop here. I explained just a little of this. Now let's move on to the games. First we're going to talk about the Blue Whale. Uh, you have probably heard about this game. This game made teens to commit suicide after following the 50 tasks suggested by the game. It's believed that the Blue Whale challenge was originated on so Rus Russian social media. A man was arrested in Russia for starting this challenge and he admitted to trying to use psychological manipulation to convince teens to kill themselves. Some of the things that the game would make teens do were overcome a fear, do not talk to any anyone all day, get up and 420 and go to the roof, watch scary movies all day, cut your lip, make yourself hurt or sick, draw the blue rail uh, on your arm with a knife and other tasks, but the last one of the tasks is to jump off the building. In short points, I explain the blue rail game. Now we'll start to talk about another game called Momo. So I think the less scary Momo. Uh, the Momo challenge typically starts out when people add or message a Momo associated contact on their WhatsApp. A terrifying image of a woman that is circulating on social media invites people to write to her through WhatsApp. Once people contacted her, Momo may then threaten the people that don't respond to her repeated messages. Uh, this game sets objectives for the user, same as the Blue Whale game. The series that Momo sends, like pictures and videos, actually make the steps towards committing suicide, such as sending a photo of someone tying a rope around their neck. This was my presentation about mysterious websites and games on the internet. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Delvina, for uh, talking about uh, some uh, very dangerous and mysterious websites on the web. Um, they uh, are uh, being used very frequently these uh, last days and can uh, be uh, very harmful to a lot of people. And now I'd like uh, to talk about uh, bullying. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, bullies at uh, school. School bullying is a type of bullying that occurs in an educational setting and in, uh, is uh, showing these days. For an act to be concerned, bullying includes uh, imbalance of power, distress, and provocation. And bullying uh, can have a wide spectrum of effects on a student, like anger, depression, stress, and suicide. Uh, when you ha have bullies, you can um, leave the uh, school. It is totally understandable when a young person uh, doesn't want to go to school because they are. Uh, expressing uh, bullying when a young uh, person feels a uh, target uh, with bullies uh, they can go into fight mode and they can uh, that is putting them at a risk emotionally or physically uh, effects of bullies a victim in the, in the short term may feel depressed angry and uh, stressed we have a photo here that shows uh, uh, emotional uh, bully. Uh, we have um, types of uh, bullies. They are four of uh, them: cyberbullying, physical, emotional, and verbal uh, bullying. Physical bullying is any unwanted physical contact between the bully and the victim. That is showing the most uh, uh, those days: the fight, kicking, pulling here, etc. 
an emotional is any form of bullying that causes the means to victim psycho and emotional well-being and verbal bullying uh, that is like directing full language etc and finally i would say to all stop bullying Thank you very much, Betem, for uh, talking a little bit about uh, bullying that is also happening at school and uh, giving us a few ways how to ignore it or avoid it. And now I'd like Mediona Musai to talk about teen snacks. Hello everyone, thank you for coming and I'm so glad to be part of this great project. Today I will talk teen uh, about teen slang and for some par uh, terms parents need to know. These days it's as if teens have their own language. By learning more about what they are actually saying, we allow ourselves to not only build a stronger bond with them, but also know if they are in potential danger. Teen text in slang and emojis parents should know. Uh, when teenagers communicate, uh, they use uh, emojis and t uh, texting slang and all parents should know about them. What others call texting, kids call talking. They talk on their phones via chat, social comments, snaps, posts, tweets and direct messages. Uh, in all this talking, a language or code emerges uh, just as it has for every generation. Only today, that language is in acronyms, hashtags and emojis. And while the slang is perfectly understood peer-to-peer, -peer, it has parents quickly language to decipher it. Little graphic symbols. And this language changes all the time. It expands contracts and specific acronyms and symbols can change in meaning uh, entirely over time, which is why you, we update this list every predictly. When they communicate, they use harmless banter too. We publish this, this list with uh, an important reminder. Uh, teen texting slang isn't inherently bad or created with an in intent to deceive or harm. Most of the terms and symbols have, have uh, emerged as a kind of clever shorthand for fast moving fingers and have no dangerous or risky meaning attached. So if you are monitoring your kids' phones or come across references you don't understand, assume the best in them. When they uh, communicate, they use uh, teen texting codes and uh, they uh, actually mean uh, with them. More than 88% of teenagers use codes to avoid their parents understanding the, their text and all parents should be prepared about that. Uh, here are some news uh, saying that some people are trying to crack the teen texting code and to, uh, to understand what they mean with them. Teen acronyms. For example, there are dozens of harmless words such as spina, fixing to do something, yeet, a way to express excitement, skeet, let's go, gucci, great, awesome, or overpriced, it, uh, etc. When they uh, communicate with each, with each other, they have favorite acronyms like uh, G2G, which means gotta go, uh, WE, whatever, uh, LOL, love out loud, etc. Uh, when they communicate, they use potential bullying slang uh, like a uh, ghost to ignore someone on propose. The T is so hot, uh, which means juicy gossip. Uh, basic, annoying person interested in shallow things, and uh, so many more. Here is a quote which says, uh, To be honest, I never compliment you when you dress up, as I am, uh, as I am uh, always jealous that you look so gorgeous. Well, uh, here is a picture of three girls. Uh, two of them are bullying uh, one another and she uh, with text and she is so worried. And they probably are using words like uh, derb, which means stupid, uh, ls or loser, butters, ugly, jelly, jealous, and so many more. Potential risky behavior slang. Broken, uh, hangover, past it, high or drunk, um, A3, anytime, anywhere, any place, etc. Potential drug-related slang. When they communicate, uh, they use uh, slangs like uh, 40, 0, but 3, and all of these means marijuana. Uh, bread uh, money, squirrel money too. Uh, bar, that's uh, it's spell, etc. Potential risky behavior slang. Here are some slangs which aren't dangerous, like uh, deb, depression, suicide, SVB, self-harming behavior, and so many more. When they communicate, they use emojis too, and both uh, like uh, with flowers, they mean drugs. With dollar sign is for sale, uh, and uh, other emojis. 
here are some uh, uh, symbols or acronyms they use uh, while communicating to uh, share their momentum emotions. Here is a quote for all parents. When it comes to figuring out what your kids are up to online, using your own instincts and paying attention will be, uh, will be your best resources. If something doesn't sound or look right on your child's phone, trust that feeling and look deeper. You don't have to know every term or symbol. The more important thing is to stay aware and stay in, involved. Thank you. Presentation are teens and how to protect them. Uh, th uh, the threat teens faces are very real, like online predators, texting while driving, hackers, illnesses, and more. But parents have their influence to ha have their power to influence at a teens technology use. Now it is a picture about my project, which uh, I want to say that we use the internet every day, but we probably can't imagine our life without it. Here are some interesting questions, like how often do we think about the risks? How often do we think about how the internet really works? Here are four big things that pretty much everyone does online, like uh, email, Facebook, search, and shopping. Uh, online privacy, why it's important? On the other hand, online privacy is important because it includes like teens and young adults among most knowledgeable and creative users of the internet. The second one is personal information. The third one is name, address, phone numbers, birth date, etc. Uh, now I want to say that uh, it is a difference between this year and one year ago because 42% of teenagers are more worried about their online privacy more than uh, a year ago. Here are top causes of concern, which the first one is collecting and sharing their personal information, which is 38%. The second one is security threats and uh, data online, which is 36%. The third one is government surveillance, which is 28%. The fourth one is companies tracking web surfing behavior, which is 22%. And the fifth one is social media sites sharing details, which is 19%. Uh, now we know that fewer than half know how to protect uh, privacy online, which here is a graphic about not aware and aware. The part with the gray color shows not aware, which is 62%, uh, and the part with the blue color shows aware, which is 38%. Uh, the 38% aware uh, shows that teenagers have done is the following. Uh, now it is the best part of my presentation. Here are uh, six suggestions about teen privacy. The first one is it's forever. Educate your teens that once these images go out into the cyber world and they no longer own them and they have no control or who sees them. Uh, at my presentation I wrote about new study which this new study finds that 6% uh, of uh, teenagers between 12 and 17 years old uh, post or share demanding things about themselves. Um, not, to, uh, not in um, our country, but in all over the world, uh, teens uh, play online games, but most of them are uh, boys. So 72% of teenagers are boys and they play uh, games online. But playing games online for young boys is not just only a form of competition, but is a form to interact with other players. Uh, internet strangers. Strangers are dangerous. They have conversation with your kids around how the internet actually works and explain to our children that the internet is full of strangers. Uh, fake profiles, pretenders. Uh, when, we, uh, when we look at the online space, there are many unsafe people and sex predators posing as different people. So they may pretend to be like a 12 years old girl and they try to be friend with your child. Uh, set up time, develop technology heavens. Bedrooms, bathrooms, or the family dinner table are the great places to upload technology. Uh, now it is a question how to manage your teen statues. Here are some uh, uh, solutions to do it, like set a time for using gadgets. Sites should have safe search extensions. Save emergency numbers on the gadget. Set up rules, create house rules or contract with your teen about cell phone and technology use. So parents should make rules in their house about technology. Uh, set up limits. A study from PEW Internet and American Life noticed that teens with limited cell phone plans were less likely to engage in sex things. 
Uh, now it is discussed with them, use a variety of methods to stay informed of your teen's technology use. So it is an app that uh, parents can download it at their phones and they can uh, find out who they text or talk to so they can spy on text, calls and location. So this is the best way to protect your child. Uh, be kind, everyone makes mistakes. Here is a question, why your kids are ignoring? Maybe kids ignore their parents because they think that now they are teens, but they should remember that they still are ch children. So everyone makes mistakes and part of growing up is learning from those experiences. And now I'm uh, lost of my uh, presentation. I want to say that children should be more open with their parents and to talk more free with them. Uh, thank you very much, Anissa, for talking about one of the problems that we usually don't see, which is uh, um, for uh, understanding our own uh, online uh, privacy, where we're uh, not uh, very careful about it. Now I would like Omde Nuka to talk about online game statistics. Hi, thank you for taking your time. I feel honorable to be here with all of you. Today I'm going to talk about online game statistics. Gaming and social development. Gaming is an instance where you may encounter certain social feedbacks. There is a group of boys, boy scouts, who share love of certain uh, of certain online virtual games. And also, these games seem to have such a deep, full, meaningful, and respectful conversation. But also, linking through these links, one study tested that uh, with time increases your aggression over time. Here is a picture of young children playing all the time those kind of games. Playing all the time, just playing and playing and playing, affects negatively. <coughs> affects negative because uh, playing and not be, being interested in your real life, it, it doesn't affect positive. Then we have taken a kind of word that says the negative and positive impacts of video games on student development. Uh, uh, development. This is a picture of two young children playing uh, violent games and uh, and being addicted on it. And it's not a good for them because just playing is not good. We have taken a quote in Google that says we cannot and will not ban the creation of violent video games, but we can prevent the distribution of these disturbing games to children where their effects can be negative. Then we are talking about uh, Americans. Uh, the, um, over 70% of Americans are uh, 18 or older and 60% of Americans play video games daily. This is a graphic of music, video and games uh, about uh, one year of uh, uh, 2017 and 2018. For example, music was increased 8.9%, uh, uh, videos were increased 10.1% uh, uh, and games were increased 9.1%. This is a picture that tells how Americans get uh, angry playing violent games. The blue one tells that they get angry a lot. The light blue tells they don't get angry a lot. And the white one uh, tells that they don't get angry. And here you see for white people, black people and Hispanic ones. Here is a picture of people that use the internet and those ones that play uh, computer or video games. Uh, this uh, color tells about girls and yellow one about boys. Uh, at uh, users of internet, we have uh, boys, uh, we have girls using it the most between years 16 and 18. And about uh, playing computer or video games, we have uh, boys uh, b uh, between years 16 and 18. This is a picture that tells uh, those ones that play games a share of game audience. Uh, the most uh, that play video games are boys with 99% between years uh, 8 to 17. This is, uh, this is a picture that tells some countries uh, that plays uh, video games, those one that use the most it. For example, UK is the first one, the German is the second one, the France and then Spain. And this is a picture that tells about uh, the online gamers uh, that are over 55 years. So this means that uh, those who play the, uh, on online games are uh, over 55 years old. And this is a picture that tells, uh, in general, how, uh, in which age are those that play the most. And the most are from 10 to, uh, to 25. And th with this one, I wanted to tell about online gaming. Thank you for listening. It was my pleasure. Uh, thank you.
Thank you very much, Andre, for telling us a uh, few uh, statistics about our online games and how much they're used in today's world. Now I would like Asa and Nika to talk about the impact of the game Pokemon Go. Table. So my point is to tell you about the Pokemon Go game, which actually was a card game before, but it's now a, a, ga a game with challenges that you have to complete and claim all the Pokemon Go characters. So the, uh, the way this game works is that you have to claim all of the Pokemon Go characters and to claim the reward at the end. So a lot of people died on their way to go there and they made accidents. Uh, like for example, they posted a picture of uh, Pokemon Go uh, uh, important uh, character and they had like to go there so here's a picture that the stranger posted a uh, war uh, at the war a Pokemon Go character which they have to claim it so a lot of people went there and they died of course at the war so uh, this is one of the most tragic uh, uh, most tra tragic news at the America that happened so the Pokemon Go uh, uh, players uh, shut down the local uh, the freeway uh, I introduced you with the game Pokemon Go. Would you like to play the game? No. no. Uh, thank you very much, Ezra, for talking about a game that is actually uh, family friendly or child friendly, but also can uh, take you to a lot of dangers. And now I would like Athena Islamet to talk about a similar game, which is the Blue Wave. Okay, right now I'm gonna talk about the Blue Whale game, who was the phenomenon the, uh, during the year 2016 and 2017. The Blue Whale. Blue Whale, also known as the Blue Whale Challenge, is a social network phenomenon dating from 2016 that is claimed to exist in several countries. It is a game reportedly consisting of a series of tasks assigned to players by administrators over a 50-day period uh, I know some before introducing elements of self-harm and the final challenge requiring the player to commit suicide. Uh, there is one of the challenges where the blue whale told the people to make a tattoo of the blue whale uh, in their arm with knife. Uh, the, uh, in November 2015, a Russian teenager posted herself with the caption Neabai. Before committing suicide, her death was then discussed in internet forums and groups becoming mixed with scare stories and folklore. Further suicides were added to the group stories soon after Russian journalist Ganina Morsaneva first wrote about these death groups in an article published in Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta in April 2016. The article described the groups on Russian social media site that she claimed had incited 130 teenagers to commit suicide. Mursaliewa's article was criticized at the time of its release for lacking credible data and believed with 130 cases of suicide, side became particularly problematic. Uh, there are a lot of news that were trying to stop this, but here is one of them when people try to stop playing the challenge of the blue whale. Uh, there is another challenge of 15, uh, where the blue whale tells the people to wake up at uh, 4 a.m. in the morning and make a suicide. Hey. Uh, thank you very much, Altina, for uh, talking a little bit about the uh, blue whale game, which is also a very dangerous game where people uh, also died and got involved in uh, very bad uh, accidents. And uh, now uh, I would like to end uh, this project. Uh, I would like to thank everybody that uh, participated here. And I would also like to uh, thank my teacher for being here. And uh, I wish you all a great day. <laughs>